um, I'll just go ahead. I've, I've put together a few overview slides here and then specifically about the data quality element within the core trust seal requirements. I'm the, I guess you'd call me the coordinator of the Australian uh, Trusted Data Repository community that's uh, sponsored by the AIDC. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about what that community does and how it works uh, over the next few minutes. Uh, these slides are all online. Uh, Ming's put the link in the, the notes, or you can go to my Twitter at Value Management. I put a tweeted a link to them there, and there you can find them there on SlideShare. Uh, you can, if you're on your phone or device, you can access them through SlideShare, but the links won't work until you download them. So if you're on your computer, you'll have to download the PDF and then you can access the links. All right, the, um, the community has a website. You can access tiny.cc slash TDR for trusted data repositories. Um, and most of this material comes from the website. Uh, and also the one page summary introduction we have um, to the community, which we're all go also going to share as a boff at the upcoming EU research conference. All right, let's, so just let me know if you have any trouble accessing those slides, clearly. So then you can browse through them at your own pace. So first one outlines who AIDC is. Hopefully that's no mystery to anyone here, but we're about competitive advantage through data, retention of high quality data assets. So trusted data repositories, obviously, once you've got the data assets, you've got to put them somewhere. And that's where the trusted element comes in that we want to be able to trust where those data assets are being held. Uh, of course, we want to acknowledge and celebrate the first Australians on whose traditional lands we meet and pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Uh, I'm here in Melbourne on the lands of the Wurundjeri people and the Kulin Nation and uh, welcome you sharing whose lands you're on around the country. <clears throat> so what is Core Trust Seal? So you can go and have a look at the website uh, I can tell you a bit of background. Uh, it's a spin-off from the Research Data Alliance where uh, those group of academics and government said, how can we determine what is a trustworthy place to put our data? Uh, so the Core Trust Hill was a spin-off organization that came from that working group that tried to define what should be the requirements of a trustworthy repository. Um, they have a funding model where when you apply for a certification, you pay a thousand euros as an application fee. And then that triggers a peer review of the application. Uh, the application then become, once you certify, becomes a public document. Let's see. So if you click on the link, you can get a map of the world that shows all the repositories around. I might just have to stop sharing and change the world. Okay. So here, you can, hopefully you can see that map of the world and you can see in Australia, there are 805 repositories certified, New Zealand and Canberra. You can see there's the CSIRO data access portal and the Australian data archive. That's Steve. So if we click here on CSIRO, uh, then you can call up their application for Core Trust Seal and see how they've responded to the requirements. So for the uh, of say 100 repositories around the world that are certified, you can see what they've written against the um, core trust seal. So, okay. okay, so uh, another important part of core trust seal is that there's a designated community that's the users and the requirements relate to 
how do you interact with those users? How do you meet their needs? So here's a diagram that we have uh, on the community website, which provides uh, an overview of the current um, 16 requirements. You see there it's in three kind of layers, organization infrastructure, digital object management, and then a kind of a technical technology layer. And the quality one there is, you can see it it's number 11. Uh, it's about management of digital objects, appraisal quality, discovery and reuse. And we're gonna dig into the R11 quality, but it was also touched on in appraisal. Um, the whole structure of the 16 requirements comes from something called the OAIS reference model, so international standard, um, and you can find a link to it on our community website. Uh, I'm not a repository specialist, so um, there are probably people in this call who understand much more about that, but it's a way of breaking down the processes of a repository and the requirements follow that model. Uh, a couple of other things here from the slide. The certifications are valid for three years once you certify. So Australian Data Archive is about to recommence the recertification process. And the other part of that is that Core Trust Seal regularly reviews the re requirements and changes them um, every two or three years. That's what the next slide is about. So this is about, we're just about to enter a new version of the requirements. And this is the closest we've seen to a change log about how the requirements are changing from 2022 to 2023. And we have several organizations in the community working towards the last submission day is the 30th of October, 31st of October, over the next few weeks, they were trying to get in with the 2022 requirements so they don't have to update their applications for the 2023 requirements, uh, which come into a force from 15th of January next year. But there's a, a kind of shutdown period from November to January. So they're trying to get in to the 2022 requirements. Oh give you a list of the people who are doing that at the moment. So you can see slightly, there's slight changing of uh, the titles. So for instance, R2 is changing from licenses to rights, R3 from continuum of access to continuum of service, R4 from confidentially ethics to legal and ethical. And R11, you see the quality is unchanged. Okay, so let's have a look at R11. So, oops. So this is the full text of R11, and it's sp spread over two slides. Um, and I will open the requirements themselves so you can see the format of them, because that tells tell you a little bit about how this works. So a requirement has like a one sentence summary this is it here. So it's title data quality and the short summary is the repository has appropriate expertise to address technical data and metadata quality and ensures that sufficient information is available for end users to make quality related evaluations. So this is a theme all through the Core Seal that it's about the repository making declarations to the users so the users can make an assessment about what data they're getting from the repository. Can the user trust the repository? So you have three participants. You have the data depositors, you have the repository, and then you have the users. So it's about the relationship between uh, the first to the second and the second to the third. So if we, we just have a browse through the statement, 
Uh, maybe I'll just give you a minute to have a quick read of it. So basically what they're saying is that when someone deposits their data, they must provide sufficient description so that a user can understand what they're looking at. That there's enough information in the description for a user to be able to assess the quality of the data. Um, it's not telling you whether it's good science or not, but it's up to the repository to make sure that the, data, the, the users can assess the quality of the data. Going on to the next second half of them. Requirement: What uh, people who submit an application to the core trust seal? What do they have to describe? Approach to data and metadata quality taken by the repository. Any automated assessment around a schema the ability of the community to comment on and rate the data and metadata, whether citations or links to citation indexes are provided. Now I put a link there to how CSIRO has written uh, an answer to that. This is actually the whole application. So if you click on the link, uh, you'll be able to read what CSI wrote in response to this. I, I had a look at it just before and it was basically saying that they have repository staff who have a look at the data and make sure there's sufficient description. Uh, there is also an extended guidance document which adds a little bit more colour to the requirement. Um, applicant should make clear in the response that they understand the quality levels that can be reasonably expected from depositors Evidence should describe how quality will be assessed during curation and the quality expectations of the designated community. So this is where the community is important. You're trying to meet the needs of the community. So different communities might have different needs. So if you have a clear view of who's using the data, then you're more likely to have a clearer view about what they need in order to assess the quality. Um, Repository and depositors are expected to document in areas in which the data or metadata quality falls below expected standard. So I was also going to show you R8 here uh, on appraisal, which also touches on quality and R12. So just open this here. So I'll stop the share so I can share. So this is the actual requirement. So I'm just going to go down to R8. Oh, in fact, first I might go to R11 to see the format. So R11 has a has a title, a short description, and then this the text, which I've just pasted into the slides. Uh, please refer to R8 appraisal. So if we go back and look at R8, R8 is about appraisal, i.e. what does the repository do when it accepts data? How do they check that it's sufficiently appropriate to go in the repository? Um, so we're just reading here. The appraisal function is critical in determining whether data meet criteria for inclusion in the collection and establish appropriate management of preservation. Uh, does the repository use a collection development policy to guide selection of data? Does the data, does the repository have quality control checks 
to ensure completeness and understandability of data deposited? If so, provide references to control standards and reporting mechanisms, including how issues are resolved. Does a repository publish a list of limits? Quality controls place to ensure data produces adhere to preferred formats. And here it says it contrasts with data quality, which addresses metadata and data quality from the point of view of the designated community, i.e. the users. So since I don't write these applications, how you actually respond to these is really a question for the, the community and perhaps Steve can talk about how the Australian Data Archive might respond to these kind of requests for clarification. I've just got one more slide now. The community itself. Tell, tell you a little bit about um, the Core Trust Seal community in Australia. So we have monthly meetings of a broader community and we have writing workshops with those groups who are actively drafting documents. And there are six who are actively working at the moment. So IMOS and GA, IMOS submitted their application towards the end of the year and their reply applying to the review comments. GA, Geoscience Australia has recently in the last few weeks submitted their application and we have four others, uh, Ames, UWA, Turn and Oscope who are looking to submit their core trust seal applications over the next few weeks before the 1 November deadline. Um, and yes, maybe I'll just give you a quick look at our website. Here's our website and a list of resources, including those two diagrams I just shown. Um, some lists of some videos, some comparison documents, a list of the requirements a one-page summary we use for the conference and then you can see the list of meetings and writing workshops that we've had in the history so to speak. All right I think that was about all just my last slide is a is a contact us slide and saying thank you for the opportunity to let you know about our community. Uh, we are interested in other repositories who may be interested to work towards Core Trust Seal. So feel free to reach out to me. My details are on the first slide or contact at any other facility. You can be invited to our regular meetings or my contact details are also on 